Okay, last time running in what's left of the car. Oh, yeah. Yep, seems right. How to remove an engine from a muscle or a Chrysler. Take the hood off. Not required, but helpful. Remove your already well-abused jump box you've been running the car with and figure out where all those sparks were coming from. Remove the gas tank and the chunk of line you'll definitely need later. Man, slant sixes are fuel efficient. And we'll put that right back where it goes. I need that later. This probably goes without saying, but obviously save the pirate flag. Pop a few rounds off in the air to keep the property values down. Go ahead and take out the good battery just in case you need it later. Yep. <clears throat> We'll go to the beach later. Radiator, upper and lower radiator hoses, and if you've got an automatic, two transmission cooling lines, then it's four 7 16th bolts on the brackets. If yours is like mine, there's already a hole in the bottom of it, so you don't need to drain it. Become confused by the reality that the screw can have the head almost completely rusted off, but the threads can still be good. Remove the windshield washer tank first because you have a long standing history of accidentally smashing perfectly good ones. Oh, by the way, those transmission cooling lines are 5 8 fittings on the lines, but you need a half inch wrench on the inner piece as well because it will spin and ruin your life. Find something else that might help to explain shooting sparks under the car. Yeah. Save all those bolts now, people. They're the same radiator bolts a Hemi Dart uses. You never know. I actually feel really bad about ruining this. Do I have two more? Yes, but that's not the point. These are uh, not exactly in production anymore. But we can file this one over there. Now would be a good time to yank the fan and probably the belts. Of course, we got real easy access on this one, but it's four half inch bolts. Depending on your situation, you may want to pull accessories. The alternator on the slant six hangs way off to the side, so I'm gonna remove that. I also need to unwire the engine, which is real easy. It's about six wires. The power steering pump often will stay in the car if you're gonna put an engine back in. I'm gonna take it out and send it away with this thing, so I'll unhook the hoses from the box. 7 16 half inch, and 9 16 sockets, wrenches, or even ratcheting wrenches will get you a long way to taking apart one of these cars. A long way. The alternator is held on with one half inch bolt, one 9 16 bolt down there, and the output lug here, if it's stock, is 7 16 On some reproduction units, I have seen a 10 millimeter nut here. I don't know why, uh, the metric system. This car's history, and if I had a knife, I'd just be cutting all these hoses, but I don't. On the slant six, the two heater hoses run to there and there. Generally, when I am putting an engine back in, I just pop them off, flop them out of the way here behind the hinge. This especially applies to small block V8s because, uh, well, it's back there right in the line of fire, but I do like to pull the distributor caps with the wires just to get them out of the way and make sure the caps don't get broken. On a slant six, it's real easy to do this. Just mark where number one is so you'll know later. When you're pulling the wiring harness on a slant especially, it's very simple, it all lives right here. You've got the two field wires that go to the alternator. You got the main charge wire. You got a water temperature sensor right there. This wire that goes up to the electric choke, which older models do not have. And there's a wire that goes down here to the oil pressure switch. Oh, also the coil wires, which are really annoying to do. You can also just unplug it all from the car and leave it on the engine, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. Also, while you're down here, this will be a good time to unplug the fuel supply line from the frame rail, unless you already did. Also a good time to admire what an absolute hunk of junk this car is. Where'd all the metal go? I've unbolted the ground wire, 1 7 16 to the body. I've unbolted the positive wire to the starter trigger and the positive wire from the battery. Pop those over here. Somehow managed to cut these hoses because ain't nobody got time for that. Also that's stripped. And I believe it's all the transmission stuff, motor mounts and out. Speaking of transmission stuff, you have options. The way I think I'll be going today is unbolting the two 5 8 bolts that go vertical from the transmission mount, unhooking the speedo cable, draining the fluid somehow, or just putting a bag over its head, leaving the drive shaft in place because I feel like it, and yanking it out. However, you can also do it the right way and unbolt the cross member as well, drop that down, pull the drive shaft, and then your transmission will be at a convenient angle like so. Doing it the way I'm doing it, you have to skate that thing over the cross member. It does work. It's a little harder to do, but now I'm gonna spend as little time as possible under here. 
Yeah. You'll also need to unbolt the shift linkage to do this. It's one clip that holds the rod to the transmission lever, and then there is a three quarter inch nut facing downwards that holds that pivot. With that out of the way, it should stay put, transmission will slide past and everything will be fine. After that, it's unhook the exhaust, unbolt the motor mounts, and out she goes. Depending on your setup, you'll either have this style spool mount found in most, but not all, 73 and newer cars, or you'll have a flat mount with a nut on the bottom. Usually these are three quarters of an inch. Next step, of course, is run out of time, run to work, come back tomorrow, and forget where you left things. Dang it. No one came and finished taking it apart. It's occurred to me that not everyone will be removing the engine and transmission together that may be looking to me for advice. Not that that's a great idea. Uh, so if you're just pulling the engine and not pulling the transmission, you'll have the added step of bell housing bolts and torque converter bolts. Also, you'll have to take off the starter. That's extra for me. The bell housing bolts that go that way into the block are 9 sixteenths. Obviously, the configuration between a V8 and a Slant 6 is a, uh, a little different. But either way, you'll have oh, four or five, let's say, 916 bolts going this way. And then you'll have two 58 bolts going that way. Also, if your setup is original, you may well have a block brace like this. The Slant 6 uses this setup, if you can see that, that big platey thingy. V8s will often have one brace here, one brace there. You'll have four torque converter bolts, and they should be 9 sixteenths, unless they aren't. Yeah, anyway, to get them out, you'll want to turn the motor. You can do this with bumping over the starter, and that works. You may be able to turn it by hand. You may be able to turn it with the next torque converter bolt. I've done this many times. Or, if it's a V8, you can come to the front here with an inch and a quarter socket and turn the motor over by hand. The Slant 6 does not have this luxury, so hopefully you can use one of the other methods. Buy gloves for over $30 a box and then forget to put them on again. Well, I avoided it as long as I can. I think I've done everything uh, that's possible without jacking up the car. I'm still extremely surprised by the apparent structural rigidity of this vehicle. I mean, I haven't found a solid piece of metal on it yet. Somehow it's not just folding like a pretzel. Maybe it's because I removed all that weight. Yeah, this would have made a fine gambler. Unfortunately, I've already sold the engine, the transmission, and the K-frame. I suppose it's technically not too late for a straight axle and, well, one of those. I'm actually glad I didn't get this done. Gave me a day to think about things. I don't think there's actually room in an A-body to leave the cross member in place and do what I was talking about. There would be if I cut the radiator support out, but unfortunately my Sawzall power is still gone. And I've decided to do actually the right thing and drop the transmission pan because I don't want to spend the next hour living in a lake of this stuff. Well, turns out this car isn't frame rails either. That's unfortunate. What is holding this thing together? Fear? No one on earth should be mad at me for cutting up this car. Dangers of working on rusty junk. That is not all of what just fell in my eye. Well, that was inevitable. Interesting note. I noticed the transmission had some spray paint on it. I went to take out the two vertical mount bolts. They're not there. And the four bolts in the cross member this way are totally wrong. They're like, 9 sixteenths hex heads and wee little, let's just say they're small. Anyway, that ain't right. So someone's been messing around with that. Must have been 30 years ago because, well, nothing's happened since then with this car. Well, I kind of got distracted again pulling other bits and ruining perfectly good stuff. And now it's time to go to work again. The exhaust pipe does not want to come down, and that is inconvenient because I actually need that. Well, I don't, but Tom does. And I tried to go ahead and put the magic penetrating juice on the bolts, but uh, the nozzle's broken off this brand new can. Well, the sun rises on a third day of this project. It actually hasn't risen yet. It's extremely early. 
My five-year-old literally kicked me out of my spot in my own bed. So here I am. If at first you do not succeed, try, try again. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna have to turn into a liquid. Well. It's loose. And my elbow hurts quite a bit from the first one breaking, which I didn't catch on camera. Yeah, safety. On both of the strappy mounty thingy and now there's a gap. So that's good. Hopefully that can just hang out while I pull the motor. I really don't want to ruin it. I also don't have a saw. <laughs> yes. A little tricky to do this by yourself, especially with a picker that really doesn't want to roll on all this rusty crap. Ah, there it is, precariously hovering in midair. Fantastic. Man, I'll tell you what, this will make a hell of a race car. Sure rolls nice. Ah, I messed up here. One tiny note, I said the nut here is three quarter. Well, in my experience, it always has been, but this one was a weird size. Like, I think I used 17 mil and installed it with a hammer, but no American size would fit. I don't know how to explain that, but anyway, your mileage may vary. Kind of trashed it coming out, but you can see here, it did have a whole paper gasket, which is usually a sign transmissions have been rebuilt. So I'm guessing that's what happened here. Well, I guess I did it. And it only took three mornings and some swearing, a busted elbow, a couple fingers, several gloves, and a horrible mess. Now I gotta drag that thing outside and bring a van in here, do this whole thing all again, and go to Oregon this weekend, I guess. Anywho, thanks for watching. Ah, I must be extremely strong. I pushed this thing out here in the yard all by myself. I see you have a big uh, crease here. I'll, I'll flatten it out for you, bud. That looks much better. Thank mm -hmm. you. Right? I appreciate that. You're welcome. You're a brilliant body man. Thank you. Hire me. You know, that was kind of too easy. And coins to the wishing well. What are you going to wish for, Delton? Cadillac Eldorado.